Welcome to the next class on bacteriology. We will be looking at another interesting member of the family Enterobacteriaceae. Today we are looking at Proteus. Proteus is one fantastic member of Enterobacteriaceae, which is also a facultative anaerobe and it has a unique characteristics which is called swami you look at a diagram that is embedded on the slide you will see how it's rep how it was represented on the agar plate proteus has a swami characteristics and this is one unique characteristics that distinguish proteus from every microorganism not just enterobacteriaceae they are not usually seen as a pathogen but as an opportunistic pathogen they are motile with peritreous flagella so this unique attribute of proteus which is called swami swami motility is usually driven by flagella and chemotaxis and it allows proteus to rapidly colonize moist environment and invade tissues. This has been one of its adaptive features, including causing disease. Remember, it is an opportunistic bacteria. The genus consists of different species, out of which these five members have been named. And these include Proteus mirabilis, Proteus peneri, Proteus vulgari, Proteus mysofascin, and Proteus ulceri. Now, out of these named species two clinically important ones include proteus, proteus mirabilis and proteus vulgaris they are the two clinically important species that have been implicated in several disease infections and so on Proteus in their in terms of habitat, proteus will fill a crucial role as sapotrophs. They are actively decomposing organic matter. In the soil, they facilitate recycling of nutrients, making them readily available for other organisms and they contribute to soil fertility. Their enzymatic arsenal allow them to degrade diverse organic compounds including protein, carbohydrate and lipids and ensuring balanced composition process. Proteus also serve as biodegraders in breaking down organic pollutants and enriching the aquatic environment. Their ability to Utilize various carbon sources, enable them to tackle diverse organic matter, contributing to the overall health and resilience of the water body. So these biodegradation potentials can even be enhanced in bioremediation efforts, utilizing proteus species to clean up certain looted sites in the aquatic environment. Now, why some strains? remains opportunistic pathogen all that exists in a commensal relationship with their host in the animal gut and including human gut they contribute to efficient digestion of by breaking down of complex dietary components additionally some studies have suggested their involvement in modulating the whole immune system potentially contributing to gut Health. Laboratory isolation and identification 
of proteins rely on battery of biochemical tests that target specific enzymatic activity and metabolic pathways of protein. Some of the key tests include US, US tests. These tests detect the presence of the enzyme US, which hydrolyzes urea into ammonia and carbon dioxide. So, a positive test indicated by color chain with release of ammonia is an indicative of proteus species. When a colon is suspected to be proteus, and also indo test is a test that screens for the production of indo, a tryptophan metabolites. So proteus species typically possess tryptophanes, leading to indo production, and a positive test result shows or confirm the presence of proteus. The material tests differentiate between certain bacteria that produce mixed acids such as acetone, acetic acid, and so on, and those that primarily produce lactic acid during glucose fermentation. Um, proteus species typically exhibit positive material tests indicating mixed acid production. Lastly, Voskawa tests in distinguish among bacteria based on their ability to ferment glucose into acetone, which subsequently condenses to form 2,3-butanidio. Now, this test helps to differentiate those that can ferment glucose to produce acetone and those that do not. So Proteus is positive for this test and is indicated by a specific color chain, which is characteristics of Proteus species. Still in the laboratory identification, the two clinically relevant Proteus species, which is Proteus mirabilis and Proteus vulgaris, can be differentiated by gelatin liquefaction test. This test helps to differentiate between them. Why vulgaris liquefying gelatin rapidly, P. mirabilis does so slowly. So this is a test that is used in differentiating the two organisms from one another. However, both of them still exhibit similar biochemical characteristics that is typical of Proteus species, that is urea hydrolysis, hydrogen sulfide production. They are positive for hydrogen sulfide production and swami abilities. Proteus are known for swami abilities. They are non lactose fermenters. They are nitrate positive, oxidase negative, and they possess a characteristic fishy odor. Proteus are known. To have the fishy odor. It smells like fish. In the laboratory, when Proteus is growing in the incubator, you can smell something that looks like fish. It's an indicator that the organism growing is Proteus. So, two, two unique characteristics of Proteus is this swarming abilities and the fishy odor. The fishy odor has nothing to do with its. Um, um, medically enhanced abilities such as disease causing and so on. The fishy odor has nothing to do with adaptability, it doesn't have to do with disease causing ability. However, the swarming ability has a lot to do with its colonization, which is motility, and enhance its infectious ability. Like I was saying, in the clinical significance, the swami motility plays a crucial role because proteus rank high among bacteria known to cause nosocomial infection. 
and the Swami motility in proteus enhance this in two ways. In especially urinary tract infection, proteus can easily ascend the urinary tract due to its swarming and colonizing ability around catheters, which is used to assist people suffering from urinary tract disease and contributing to bowel formation and recurrent UTI. Secondly, in wound infection, especially in open wound, proteus swarming ability allow it rapidly spread and evade all defenses, leading to more severe cases and difficult to treat infection. Whenever this situation occurs, it could complicate the wound infection. There are microorganisms, especially gram-negative bacteria, that are usually implicated in wound infection. One is Acetobacter baumani, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, and Proteus. Treatment of infection caused by proteus can be made possible by the use of potent antibiotics. While proteus mirabilis are sensitive to ampicillin and cephalosporin, P. vulgaris may not be really sensitive to these antibiotics but can be treated with other strong beta lactam drugs such as carbapenem. Carbapenem, example of carbapenem is imipenem. Meropenem. These are strong antibiotics of the beta lactam class that is capable of killing or treating infection caused by proteus. We will look at some practice questions, and I believe this practice question will help us in looking at how you can understand this better. Before then, I want to ask a question. What are the bacteria that are usually encountered in wound infection? What are these bacteria? You can drop this in the comment section. 